The teen vaping crisis, mistake or manipulated? Vaping is essentially the inhaling and exhaling of smoke-like vapor containing nicotine and flavoring. It's produced through an e-cigarette, more commonly known as a vape, and could easily be mistaken for a USB or flash drive. Vaping is promoted as the healthier alternative to smoking. However, it is aimed at adults, yet it's very new and therefore lacks a lot of long-term research on the effects of vaping. But due to the ingredients and the manufacturing processes, I can confirm that vaping is no healthier than smoking. It may lack ingredients like tar, however, to make up for this, it includes harsh chemicals which do have really harmful effects on your body. I currently live in Singapore, a country which the buying, selling and consuming of vaping products is highly illegal. At first, I wondered why this was, but then I realised it's because of this lack of long-term research into the effects. So effectively, Singaporeans are just being saved from the unknown. But if vaping products were aimed at adults, then why is there such a big attraction in the teenage world? What makes it so, under, so attractive to the underage market? Well, careful product design, enticing adverts, marketing manipulation, and highly misleading pro-vaping propaganda. Teenagers are vulnerable and therefore develop addictions quickly. Brands use this and market their products to specifically aim these vulnerable teenagers. As a result of this, in the USA, for example, Vaping is a teenage crisis which is initiating an epidemic of nicotine addictions. It's a vicious cycle which remains unnoticed. Smoking is now a lot less common in teenagers. Maybe it's because of the repulsive smell of cigarettes or maybe it's because there's more awareness as to the health risks. However, smoking, the concept of smoking is still highly alive. It's just switched from pungent smelling cigarettes to a product which seemingly fits better in today's technology-driven society. Owning a refillable or disposable vape, one of these cool, sleek, practical devices, not only replicates the concept of blowing smoke, but it also eliminates the repulsive taste of cigarettes. Their creators claim to have aimed these products at adult smokers. However, there are so many aspects of vaping which point straight at the teenage market just simply like the fact that they don't really provide a comparable substitute for smoking instead it's just a convenient nicotine delivery device vapes come in many different flavors from mango to mint to iced lemon tea to even coca-cola now this might sound creative but i just can't really imagine a 60 year old man walking down the street blowing smoke out of a strawberry milkshake flavored stick. This is a strong indicator that it is aimed at the younger generation. I'm now going to talk about some pro-vaping propaganda which I have experienced myself. We all know in countries like the US, cigarettes are stored behind the counter. In the UK, they're even plastered with disturbing images displaying the high health risks that smoking has. They're also age limited vapes are also age limited however in some stores vapes are displayed right next to the candy section or sweet treats just picture this a seven-year-old child walks into a convenience store to buy their favorite packet of coca-cola flavored gummies and on the right they see the coca-cola flavored vapes it's the fact that from such a young age, these children have such frequent exposure to such a deadly product. These discrete devices that fit in your palm are advertised as being harmless. And this is my next problem, the way they're marketed as being fun and harmless. A lot of these devices imitate other technological products such as Apple products. They share a comparable aesthetic, which usually consists of a titanium looking finish, a cuboid shape with curved edges, a power light, which signals the battery status of the device. And some are even charged with the same USB-C charger that we use to charge our MacBooks. It seems overly convenient, doesn't it? Well, it's just another trick. 
phones, laptops, tablets, iPads. These are devices which as teenagers, we already have addictions to. Vaping companies take advantage of these pre-existing addictions and use them to attract and influence the younger, more vulnerable generation. Another bit of pro pro-vaping propaganda which I've experienced is bus stops. In the UK, for example, public transport is very important in teenagers' daily routine. And so vape brands deliberately choose these locations to promote their products at because they know that that's where they'll be seen the most. They use big, bold images and texts, which include the healthier alternative to smoking and no tar, no smoke, no ash. These slogans grasp teenagers and essentially they initiate the idea that maybe vaping isn't as unhealthy as smoking and won't cause the same illnesses such as cancer. But advertisements are there to persuade. And so from such a young age, teenagers have such frequent exposure and are introduced and encouraged to take up vaping. As a result, teenagers are now one of vape companies' biggest buyers. There's plenty of evidence to show that if teenagers weren't invested, these brands would be nowhere near as successful or growing as fast as they are today. They feed off the vulnerable mind of teenagers. Lastly, vaping was only created a few years ago, bear in mind, but when these companies first released their campaigns, they caused a lot of concern. And this was because they used young, attractive models and playful contemporary colors on their campaigns. And this didn't really fit their alleged target audience who were said to be adult smokers. In some cases, they even used social media influencers to attract young people. We all know the power of social media today, especially with the youth. Medias like Instagram, which is our hub for high schoolers, was one of the roots of the problem. Companies abused features like the hashtag and therefore this caused a massive spike in the popularity of the product. Some companies did later face repercussions. The, this then included a switching campaign from young models and playful colors to instead testimonials from current adult smokers about their own experiences. However, it was too late. The teenage market is so vulnerable that the problem grew on its own. But just from the switching campaign, enticing adverts and pro-vaping propaganda, we can see that the initial intentions of these companies was simply to, you, to persuade teenagers. They knew the power of their products would complement successfully with the vulnerability of teenage minds. And so to this day, as this compelling product increases in popularity, every single young partaker is not only a money-making machine for these companies, but also a guinea pig for the long-term unknown side effects of vaping.